today's video, we're going to go over these seven pricing mistakes so you can make sure that you are creating the profits you should be in your business. Believe it or not, some of these mistakes are emotional ones that get in our way and cost us tons of profits. But first, let's take a look at some important business number reasons. The first mistake is a little nerdy, but very important. And that is not realizing that markup doesn't equal gross margin. A lot of people say that they're going to mark up their products 100%, and then they think they're going to be able to pocket that money. Part of the reason is they don't understand that markup is one thing and gross margin is something else. Gross margin is the percentage of your sales that the business makes after cost of goods, and a 100% markup doesn't equal 100% margin. Let me explain. First off, let's start with the number one calculation that I'm always telling people to learn, and that is sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit. Gross margin is what you have after you subtract your cost of goods from your sales. Here's the example. Let's say that you have a product that costs you $25 and you say, I'm going to mark it up 100%. This means that you're going to take the same $25 and add it to the top. And this comes up with a price of $50. But now let's look at what your gross margin is going to be. And that is sales minus cost of goods equals your gross margin dollars. So we'll start with our $50 minus the original cost of goods of $25, and that gives us $25 of gross margin dollars. And yes, it does match what we had for our markup, but this is where there is so much confusion. Yes, your gross margin dollars are the same, but gross margin percentage, which is what we always look at, is going to tell you how much of your sales price is going towards your cost of goods. And that looks like this, sales minus cost of goods divided by your sales. Keep in mind, anything you spend in your business is a percent of your sales. If sales are 100% of your money to start with, and everything has to add up to 100%. So knowing this, let's figure out what our gross margin percentage is. Using our earlier formula, we're going to plug in the numbers. $50 in sales minus $25 in cost of goods gives us $25 in gross margin. We now divide the gross margin by our sales of $50, and we get 0.5 or 50%. So as you can see, your 100% markup really is only a gross margin of 50%. This means that yes, you marked it up 100%, but only 50% of your sales is left to pay your expenses and create a profit for the business. But there's a lot more to this. And if you want to learn more about gross margin versus markup, check out the video that's in the show notes. The next big mistake small business owners tend to make when pricing their products or services is they fail to figure in their employee time into their cost of goods. For many of you, you are the laborers in your business, and in order to get a true cost of goods, you need to account not only for the materials that you use, but you must account for any labor hours that are part of creating the product or service you are providing. Many small business owners typically pay just their costs. They set aside some for other bills, and then they pocket the rest of the money. You must keep in mind, you wear two hats in your business. One is the laborer and one is the business owner. The laborer you needs to be paid out of the cost of goods when you are the one providing them. And the business owner gets paid out of the profits of the business. If you pocket what is left at the end of the day and you fail to get a true cost of goods, it does not prepare you for you replacing yourself in the field one day, nor does it give you a true cost of goods. Your prices need to reflect that there is labor involved in creating the product or providing the service. So it's important that you make sure your cost of goods are always correct. And the only way you can get a true cost of goods is to make sure that you are budgeting for you, the laborer in your business. For example, let's say you have a service-based business and you have two labor hours. A fair wage is $20. The best way you can think about this is if you were to hire someone off the streets, what would you have to pay them to do what it is that you do? That might be $15, $18, $20 or more. Remember, you want a fair wage, not a crazy wage, just a fair wage that you would pay someone else to do what it is that you do. Now, let's say that the service also has $10 in materials that you're going to use. This means that you have $10 in materials and $40 in labor hours, giving you a true cost of goods of $50, not just the $10 that many people would only account for. Think back to our number one calculation of sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. In order for you to price correctly, you have to have the right cost of goods and you need to be included in those. This really becomes important down the road when you start to hire people because you need to make sure that you've worked these hours into your pricing. You need to have them worked in as laborers in your business versus you doing it. 
It's one of the biggest reasons why small businesses hire people and start to make a lot less money because they never properly accounted for this in the first place. Now, I'm not saying you need to create a payroll for yourself. I'm just saying you need to capture those costs in your profit and loss and when you're building your pricing to make sure that you're using the correct numbers. Think of it this way. The laborer you gets paid $500 a week and then and if and only if the business is profitable, you can take money out as the business owner. This gives you an extra incentive to create a profitable business. And once again, yes, there is a video in the show notes where that I will walk you through how to ensure that you are being paid correctly in your business. Now, the third reason why small business owners mess up their pricing is they fail to ensure that the sales price covers their cost of goods, the expenses, and their desired profits. You have probably noticed that I keep saying over and over the number one calculation you need to memorize is sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit. The reason that I say this is because this mirrors the way money flows through your business. You will notice that your profit and loss also follows the same flow. Here is an example. Your sales are on top, then the next section is for cost of good, followed by the operational expenses, and finally the net income, which is the profit the business makes prior to taxes. So in order for you to make sure that you are profitable, you have to make sure that every sale is collecting money to cover these costs, expenses, and to ensure that you have a profit. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. You have a product or service that you collect $100 for every time you sell it, and your cost of goods happen to run about 50% each time. This means that $50 goes towards your costs, thus leaving you $50 to cover your expenses and potential profit. And let's assume that your business typically runs 25% of sales every month. This means that 25% of the original $100, because once again, everything is a percentage of sales, has to be set aside to pay your expenses, which means 25% of the $100 you collect is $25, and you need to put this away to be able to pay your bills as they come due. When a business owner doesn't know what their expenses run, they oftentimes will set prices that are willy-nilly and they think that they're going to cover them, but they never know for sure. And oftentimes they way underestimate this amount, which is why they end up stealing the money they normally would pay themselves just to pay the bills. And this is typically why they are working for free, because they fail to account in their pricing the correct amount that they need to pay the business's bills. Keep in mind, you do not force your prices up just to pay your bills. You want to make sure you run the business lean and mean, but keep in mind your pricing cannot only account for costs and what you want to make personally. They must include these expenses. Let's say our business owner collects $100 for the sale of a product or service and thinks they're going to make $50 because they know they have $50 in costs. So they take the $50, pay their costs, and then put the rest in their pocket. They go on their merry way and pretty soon they realize they do not have enough money to pay the bills at the end of the month. Now they have to dip into the money they thought they had, but it's no longer there. Keep in mind, your expenses will typically fluctuate depending upon what the business is paying each month. Some things are paid monthly, some quarterly, and even yearly. But you need to budget monthly to ensure you have the right amount when the time comes. The key is to always remember that for every sale, these three buckets need to be accounted for. If you want to make $25 in profit, then you must have a good understanding about your costs and expenses. Once again, if you want to learn more about this, check out the link below in the show notes for another video that will help. Now, the fourth reason why small business owners fail to price correctly is not reviewing their pricing on a regular basis. It is important that you take a look at your prices at minimum once a year and make adjustments accordingly. Over the last few years, prices and costs have gone up dramatically, yet so many small business owners haven't changed their prices at all over the last two to three years. What they are doing is absorbing those higher costs and expenses on their end and not passing it along to their customers. And thus, they are taking a pay cut because someone has to make up that difference. The business owner makes less money and the customer is benefiting from the owner never passing this cost along. For example, let's say you sell something for $75. Your costs last year were $40, but now they are $50. Your expenses have also creeped up due to gas prices. However, you still charge the same $75. Your bottom line profit will now decrease due to your cost of goods going up as well as your operational expenses. What used to be a $20 profitable item is now more like $8 to $9 a profit. Now, I understand if the cost change is temporary, But when you know that this price is going to be your price going forward, you have to make the change. Believe it or not, the customer is expecting it because you're not the only product or service that has been going up in price. Yes, they won't like it initially, but who does? But if they love what you provide and it's a fair increase, they will be fine. 
Plus, keep in mind, every single year your business is growing. You might hire people, which increase your costs, plus your expenses might go up because your business is growing. There is a host of reasons why you need to always be reevaluating your prices. Obviously, if your cost of goods are going up due to material costs and or you have higher labor costs, your business cannot afford to operate without passing this along. There is a reason why a lot of those big box businesses that do what it is that you do charge way more than you. Typically, it is because their overhead is way higher than yours. Yes, they tend to have better brand recognition, but that is only one piece of why they charge more. Ultimately, they charge more because they have to in order to stay profitable. Okay, our next couple of mistakes are more from an emotional standpoint. Our fifth pricing mistake way too many small business owners make is they set their prices based off of what they would be willing to pay versus what their ideal customer will pay. Let me explain. Let's say you have a service-based business and you are currently charging $50 for your service every month. And you know you probably should be priced more like $75. But what happens is you personally feel uncomfortable paying $75. So therefore you never raise your prices or you do it a very small amount. However, your customers happen to live in a more affluent neighborhood and they make more money than you do. To them, the $75 is still a screaming bargain. And if they love what it is that you do, how you provide it, and the amazing results you get, they are going to be willing to pay the price because to them, it's all about value. Way too many small business owners struggle with their own internal perception of value versus what their customer's perception of value is. And in many cases, they would be perfectly fine with paying a little more as long as you are solving their pain point. Another great example is, let's say somebody has a $10,000 watch. For some people, they would never in a million years pay $10,000 for a watch, and I would be one of those people. However, there are other people that have the means to pay for a $10,000 watch, and to them, it is nothing. Heck, they even collect them. Is the watch worth $10,000? Well, it depends upon who you ask. For people like me, probably not. But for other folks who love them and are willing to pay, absolutely. So when you're pricing your products, keep in mind who your buyer is. What is their pain point and what are they willing to pay for the problem that you solve? While most people would never spend more than a couple thousand dollars to upgrade their kitchen, others will pay tens of thousands of dollars to have their dream kitchen. You just have to make sure that your value meets their expectations for the price you want to charge. So please stop pricing based off of what you're willing to pay and start focusing on what your customers will pay. And if you want to talk about this a little bit more, yes, there's a video in the show notes. All right, let's talk about the sixth pricing mistake small business owners make when they're setting their prices. And that is they feel the need to be the cheapest. Listen, this is not a race to the bottom. It is very rare that you need to be the cheapest in town. Yes, you are always going to have customers in your community that want the cheapest price possible. And there will always be someone who's willing to give it to them. But that doesn't mean it has to be you. When you feel obligated to be the cheapest, you tend to way over deliver for the prices that you are charging and you are not taking into account the value that you are providing. You need to understand that if somebody is only wanting the cheapest person they can find, they were never going to be loyal to you in the first place. They will always chase the cheapest person because the minute you made any kind of pricing change, they were going to jump ship and go with the cheaper option. But even if you didn't change your price, if someone cheaper showed up, they're still going to drop you like a hot potato. A lot of people worry about raising their prices thinking they're going to lose customers, and more than likely, you will, especially if they were only using you for your cheap price. But the reality is, that's okay. Think about it. If you're not making any money on them now, what are you really losing? However, keep in mind, if you find new people who are willing to pay the new price that those people wouldn't pay, they're way more valuable to you because they're willing to pay the value that you provide, and they're going to be way more loyal than someone who's only using you for price. Let's take a look at a quick example. Let's say you have 50 monthly customers and you make $10 a profit on each of them. This means that you have 50 customers times the $10 in profit, which means you have a monthly profit of $500. But let's say you raise your prices $10, so now your profit is 20 bucks. And let's say you lose 15 of those customers, so now you only have 35 customers. Ouch, that hurts. But what happened to your profits? You now have 35 customers who are creating $20 profit a month. So 35 times $20 equals $700 in profit. Yep, you lost 15 customers, but you gained $200 more in profit. Oh, and once you replace those 15 customers you lose, your profit now looks like this. 50 customers times $20 means $1,000 in profit. Now, was it worth it for you to lose those 15 people? You now have doubled your profits and you have way more loyal customers. 
Oh, and by the way, you didn't have to work any more hours to double your business profits. And that's what I call the win. And yes, if you want to learn more, there is a video in the show notes. Okay, let's take a look at the seventh mistake that small business owners make when it comes to pricing, finding out what the market can bear. Let's face it, there are only so many hours in a day, and unless you plan to work 80 plus hours a week, you need to find a way to increase your profits without sacrificing your life. Before you go hiring more people, make sure that you are maximizing your profits. You need to discover what the market is willing to pay for what it is that you have to offer. Remember in our last example, by just raising our prices $10, we were able to create an additional $200 in profit. And by replacing the people we lost, we were able to double our profit. And as I mentioned, you didn't have to work any more additional hours. You might have heard of the saying, when you have too much business, raise your prices. This typically happens when you start finding yourself having to schedule your clients and new business out two to three, four weeks or months. The best way to slow down your business is to raise your prices. The cheap people, like we mentioned, will always go away, but the people that have heard all about the value that you provide are going to wait it out, and they're going to be willing to spend more money. You have built a business that people need. They want to use you. This is why they're willing to wait for you. And yes, many will be willing to pay more if they could get to you sooner. Once again, we don't always feel comfortable with raising our prices, but you will be shocked at how many customers are willing to pay it. Now you will notice that this particular pricing mistakes combines all of the previous ones, both number wise and emotionally. We understand the more they pay, the better the profits, but emotionally we worry that they will not be willing to pay. But what do you have to lose? You are already turning down business due to how long it takes for them to use you anyways. Why not fill your pipeline with folks that are willing to pay more? It is important that you continue to raise your prices so you can find out what that sweet spot is that your customers are willing to pay. Remember, this is a profit game, not a sales game. The goal isn't to work as many hours as you can to create as many sales as you can. Yes, you need sales to create profit, but the first thing you have to do is make sure that the sales you are creating are profitable. So if you are too busy, raise your prices. When you start noticing that you are losing way too many customers and not able to replace them, then you know you've gone too far. But keep in mind, this is all about value and solving that pain point that the customer is willing to pay because they see that they're going to get an amazing value for what it is they pay by dialing into solving their problem and giving them the solution that they want. As you can see, there are seven different reasons and probably even more, but these seven are enough for you to concentrate on getting your pricing correct. Which of these seven mistakes are you making in your business? Is it one of them or multiple? I'm pretty sure you've come to the realization that you have been holding back the profit that you could be making in your business by controlling your pricing. So take one of these mistakes and run with it. And let's work on getting your prices correct. And don't forget to check out the show notes for all the other videos that relate back to each of these items so you can dive in way deeper. I'll see you on the next video.